Hey everyone, my name is Scott Keys from S Keys Images and Wildlife Inspired. Today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on noise reduction and I'm going to show you three different methods that I've used in the past and the one that I'm currently using now. So in the past I've done noise reduction in Photoshop and I've used some third-party uh, filters as well. The product that I'm using now is Topaz Denoise. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that product and how it compares to the ways that I used to do this. So let's get on to the video. Uh, if you look at the screen, I've got a Canada Warbler that I shot earlier this year, and I tried to find something that had an ISO um, over a thousand. So let me just pull up some of the dark areas. With noise in general, you're going to see uh, more noise in the darker areas than you do in the lighter areas. And when I'm zoomed in to 300%, uh, you can certainly see that there's a grain to this image. So I'm going to apply three different methods of noise reduction. I've created three layers over here, so each layer is just a duplicate and I'm going to toggle these on and off one at a time and at the end that'll give me the ability to really show a compare and contrast of these images. Alright, so the first one is just regular Photoshop noise reduction and this is done through a filter and when you hit the filter menu you're going to see a noise and you'll see options for adding noise and reducing noise. So we're going to hit the noise reduction. It gives a preview and we're going to zoom in and I've got the strength at 10 now. And you can change this so I could go more or less. Um, typically with this, I increase the color noise reduction, which you're pretty safe to do. Um, that doesn't tend to take a lot of details out. I'm not going to sharpen any details. And I'm going to bring the strength of this up uh, to 8. And this was pretty typical of, of how I used to do this on quick edits. Because honestly, it was just a, a pretty fast way to do it. I'm going to apply that to the image. So again, this was at a strength of 8 with no sharpening applied. So let's go in and see what that did. Uh, on these toggle, I can toggle the layers on and off. So there's the before, there's the after. You can see that it did remove a little bit of noise with some left. Of most interest is what it does to the subject though. And one of the dangers of using noise reduction that it tends to soften the subject. So when I put that noise reduction on, you could see the subject just got a little softer. Not a whole lot. So the noise reduction is on and the noise reduction is off. So just a little softer. Let's see what happens when we do this in Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm going to select a new layer and I'm going to go up and hit um, the filter. And now I'm going to bring in the Camera Raw filter. So you could also just reopen this in Camera Raw or you could edit this in Lightroom. And there are settings here for noise reduction as well. So when you go to the detail, so if you look at my menu bar here, I selected detail and noise reduction um, is the same here with color. And I normally crank that up about three quarters and then luminance, which I only go about a quarter. And again, it'll allow me to preview. So when, when I click on it, it'll show me the noise reduction um, on and off. And I'm just going to increase this a little bit more. And we'll see what that looks like. No, again, no sharpening applied to this. Now this one, um, I went a little stronger probably than I did in Photoshop. You can definitely see the reduction in noise. So when I look in this dark area, here it is on, much smoother. Here it is off. You can see that grain come back into play, but watch what it does to the subject. So again, I went a little stronger on the noise reduction. So it does a nice job. One of the things I used to do with noise reduction is I would create these noise reduction layers and then I would do masks and I would tend to paint out the noise reduction on the subject. So that's certainly a viable option still. Now let's try the last method, which is the one that I'm currently using now, and that's Topaz. The beautiful thing about Topaz is it works, it integrates with Photoshop so that you don't have to send it out to a third party uh, piece of software. So it's right in here and you can see I've got a few uh, Topaz products that I'm using. The one I'm using now is called Denoise AI. So they make two versions. They make a, a standard part of their studio was just called Denoise and this AI. And the AI stands for artificial intelligence and it's pretty slick what it does. It'll go in and try to figure out which areas should be sharp, which areas should, be, uh, should have noise reduction applied to them, and then it will act appropriately. And you can see I've got a couple sliders in here for removing noise enhancing sharpness and recovering details. I've played around with these settings and my default for this has been somewhere between 10 and 15 on the remove noise 
similar on the enhanced sharpness and I haven't been using uh, much of this recover details so in general you figure 15 15 5 is about right or 15 10 5 um, has been a, a pretty a common setting sometimes it also depends on the file size so if you're working with more megapixels with a bigger resolution camera you may find that you can move these sliders a little bit more and then again if you have less resolution you may you may be uh, inclined to do uh, fewer adjustments let me zoom in here at 400 percent now so now we're in real tight and we're going to see that noise reduction applied and look how smooth this one got now i can adjust it but i'm going to leave it here so it's a pretty strong noise reduction what i want you to really pay attention to here is though when i toggle on and off watch the noise go but the details stay i didn't have to do anything for that to happen now i can change that with enhanced sharpness and recover details but the program without much of that applied actually does it by itself it has determined what it thinks is the the subject and it's applied a little bit of sharpening to that in the same time it determines what's the background and it, it really smooths it out so let's go ahead and apply that and that'll put it onto that layer that i was working on uh, in the in the photoshop area now this takes a little bit longer so you notice the other two processes were pretty quick they're integrated into lightroom they're honestly not as powerful this one is going through and calculating every area of the image trying to get it right now let's compare all three so let's start with the Photoshop noise reduction. And this was the original file. This was the Photoshop noise reduction. And again, I didn't crank it up to 10, but I cranked it up to eight. So, you know, a fair amount of noise reduction. Here is the Adobe Camera Raw version where I applied more noise reduction. And you can see it did a pretty good job on the background, but the subject got softer. So as I increased the strength of the filter, it got softer. And here's the Topaz product the smoothest of all the backgrounds clearly and also the sharpest on the subject now one thing i will do here is this product again it figures out where the borders are and no product is perfect so with artificial intelligence it will uh, sometimes create anomalies so you do need to go in and look around and try to make sure that nothing weird happened on edges because I apply my noise reduction in layers, I do have the ability to mask it out. And I'm not gonna do a tutorial on that, but you could mask out some of the noise reduction. I can also control it with opacity. So if I feel like I could bring some noise back in, I can just dial back the opacity on this layer. It'll bring it to a little bit more of a natural state where it was before. And some of those artifacts will smooth out if there were any around the bill. So again, because this product determines which areas should be sharp and which should have the noise reduction applied, you run the risk around the edges, around the bill here, um, around the feather details here, that it could create some anomalies or artifacts. Now there's ways to clean those up and I actually do that. I've noticed with this product, it introduces blue. So watch when I go from here. What it did is it smoothed this area, it tightened up this area, and in the process of tightening up the edge of the bill, it added this blue color that was probably there a little, but it enhanced it. So sometimes I'll go back in and just clean up these areas um, where it looks like it might've done some of that. Let's look at this area right here. You could see that it was just a droplet and it applied some noise reduction and sharpening. Um, that probably would hold up okay, but I am particular with this product. Um, that I go in and look at the details. I'll look around eyes. So let's take the product off and I'll just see if it introduced any blues here that I might wanna get rid of. And there's very simple ways um, you can desaturate color channels. So you can just go up to blues and you can just pull the blues down and then you can mask those onto the areas you want. Again, not a tutorial on masking and cloning and desaturation, really just a tutorial on the power of this Topaz product. So with that said, I will tell you, uh, having used all three of these in the past, using the Photoshop noise reduction, the Adobe Camera Raw noise reduction, and when I used that, I always had to go back in and mask it out because it made the subject too soft. With the Topaz, Topaz product, I'm telling you, uh, I really don't do any masking anymore. I let the program run. The only thing I then do is decide if I wanna go back and apply an opacity to that layer 
to bring a little bit of the grain back in if it went too strong. So uh, it gets my full endorsement. It's got a few things uh, that I'll, I'll comment on in the comments of this video. So you'll see a couple links. I do get some uh, bonus points with Topaz when you use the link below. So if you're considering purchasing, use the link below to purchase. And um, if you send me a message either through email or direct message on Instagram at SKeys Images, or I'll put my email address in here as well. Uh, send me a direct message. I have some coupon codes uh, available that they were kind enough to send me that I can pass on. So that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, definitely a product that I would look into. Have a great day.